Goobertown Hobbies. Welcome to Goobertown. What should I use to strip paint off of plastic minis? There are a lot of answers to that out there. Some people swear by one product, some people swear by another. They can't all be right, can they? So today we're going to do some head-to-head -head testing and we are going to figure this out. Alright, these are the contestants for today. There are no actual paint thinners or paint strippers on the list since they melt plastic. What we do have is a selection of other commercial cleaning products. So what we have is denatured alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, ammonia, simple green, super clean, and LA is totally awesome. And we're going to see which one does the best. So this is a bunch of minis that I got off of Craigslist and eBay. And the point I want to make here is that I don't know who painted these, and I don't know what kind of paint they used. I found that when I strip minis, a lot of times the paint will come right off, but every once in a while the paint will be very stubborn and not come off at all. And what I've taken from that is just that some paints are more chemically resilient than others. So in these experiments, I want to make sure that we're testing these paint strippers against a variety of different paints that we might find on eBay models. These are the bits that we're going to be testing. These are Dark Elf Spears. I picked them because they're big enough so that we can see what we're doing, they're small enough so they fit into vials nicely, and also I happen to have a whole lot of them for some reason. So they're painted up in six different colors for six different types of paint, and I picked those types of paint based on what I thought might be a, a good spread of what you could find on an eBay model. For yellow, I put down two coats of the most heinous spray paint I could find. This is some real industrial looking stuff. I would never put it on my own models. I had a very hard time even trying to get an even coat with it. If I did have models covered in this stuff, I can tell you I would certainly try to strip them, and short of that, I would certainly try to sell them on eBay. So that's what we need to be ready for. For blue, I also used two coats of spray paint. This is a paint I might actually have considered using on my models as a younger man. It's a paint, it's a primer, bonds to plastic, and it's got a kind of cool color there. You know, I, I almost wonder if you prime up some marines with this, maybe throw some washes on them, maybe you get some ultramarines out of the deal. I don't know. Either way, I uh, want to make sure that we are able to strip this off models, because I guarantee people on eBay have, have tried priming with this stuff. For the next couple of colors, I did do an undercoat with black primer from Armory. I think a lot of us in our collection have some models that have been undercoated with black wargaming primer, so it's important that the paint strippers that we use can deal with it. So for green, I popped open this old bottle of testers paint that I had. This stuff is oil-based, and so it's going to have different chemistry for the paint strippers to react with but I know that it is a popular type of paint with, you know, model train hobbyists, model plane, model cars, that sort of thing. So you can definitely find it on eBay models. Gotta be ready for it. So for red, I used Games Workshop Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. Put a nice thick layer down. I think this is going to be very typical of models that you might see on eBay. Nice thick layer of Citadel paint. Gotta be ready for that too. So the last two are undercoated in this Vallejo gray primer that I put down with my airbrush. The purple I used is an army painter purple that I thinned down a little bit and also put that down with my airbrush in a couple of thin coats. And then what I did is I hit it with a gloss varnish and a matte varnish, uh, both from Vallejo using my airbrush. And what I want to do here is test whether or not varnishing or sealing a model makes it immune to paint strippers. And this is something I've been wondering about for a while, and it's something I'm honestly kind of afraid of, is if people seal their minis, does that mean it's, it's much harder to clean them off and start over? Alright, for orange, I also used an army painter paint that I thinned down, put in my airbrush, and did a couple of thin layers over that Vallejo Gray primer. And once that orange was dry, I took some Rust-Oleum Rattle Can Clear Enamel to it to give it a gloss varnish, and then I dulled it down with this Bottle Master's Lusterless uh, Overcoat. And again, the question we're trying to get at here 
is whether or not sealing a model makes it more difficult to strip or not. Okay, the samples are finally ready. We have six different paint schemes here of relevance to what you might find on an eBay model. So let's find a paint stripper that can deal with anything we throw at it. First up, we have denatured alcohol. This is also called ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Essentially, this is drinking alcohol that has been poisoned a bit so that you don't try to avoid paying the vice tax by drinking this cleaning solvent. Uh, in the UK, I'm told this is called methylated spirits, so drinking spirits that have a little bit of methanol added to poison it. This uh, is a good cleaning solvent in some situations. I've used it effectively to strip paint before, so let's give it a shot. Okay, this is a time-lapse video of the first two hours that these spears were in ethanol. And you can see that really in the first few minutes, the orange color starts coming off. And this is actually really interesting because orange was the one that was a layer of army painter, but then covered up with rattle can gloss coat and rattle can dull coat. And that kind of busts a myth that varnished models can't be stripped down to bare plastic, because there we go. Um, if you look around at the other colors, most of those other ones are holding in there okay. Um, there is a little bit of damage to the purple if you look real closely, but for the most part the others are doing okay with just this two hours in ethanol. So after that two hour time lapse, I took the vials, I put them on my shelf, and I forgot about them for a full month. Then I came back, and this is what they looked like. So no surprise, that orange is all off, and by now you can also see uh, major, major damage to that layer of purple paint. So the next thing I did is I took the spears out of their vials, took a pair of gloves, a bowl of water, and a toothbrush, and I gave them all 10 or 20 seconds of scrubbing to see if I could get any more paint off. And the results didn't change much. The red, the yellow, the green, and the blue all stayed pretty intact, but I was able to get a nice clean plastic on the orange and the violet. Alright, next up is isopropyl alcohol, also called isopropanol. This stuff is sold as rubbing alcohol, and is the stuff that smells like hospitals. Anyway, some people say this is a good paint stripper, so we are going to give it a shot. Next up we have that time lapse of our spears in isopropyl alcohol. And you can see that orange, again, starts to come off pretty quickly. Not quite as quickly as with the ethanol, though. But also coming off, we see a little bit of that red and that purple. So the orange and the purple aren't really a surprise at this point. Again, those are the two army painter paints. But the red, this is the first time we've seen that coming off. That's the Games Workshop paint. The three that seem to be holding steady are the blue, which is that paint and primer, the yellow, which is that heinous spray paint, and the green, which is that tester's oil-based paint. One month later, violet, Orange and red are all showing damage. Let's get to the scrubbing. When I got to brushing, I found that red would come off if I brushed it hard enough and was patient enough with it. Orange definitely came off. Yellow did not come off. Green also did not come off. Blue did not come off. But purple did come off. Next up is ammonia. I actually haven't seen anyone talking about ammonia as a paint stripper, you know, one way or the other online, but I had some under my sink, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Alright, on to the time lapse video. Not much happening yet. So I'll fill some time talking about ammonia. It smells like cat urine. What else about ammonia? Well, ammonia is a good time to talk about safety. Don't mix chemicals under your sink unless you know exactly what you're doing. Ammonia kind of famously will react with bleach to make a poisonous gas, which will cause you to pass out and keep breathing the poisonous gas. And so, just a real good teachable moment, don't mix things under your sink. Bleach, good cleaner, ammonia, good cleaner, together, poisonous gas. Be careful, be smart. And here we are one month later, 
and there is no visible change to any of these spears. It looks like the paint is pretty much intact, so we're going to go to scrub and see if that's the case. So scrubbing did help a little bit. The red still didn't come off, but the orange and the yellow came off a little bit with some tooth brushing. Green didn't come off, and blue also did not come off, but purple came off all right. So we're seeing a, a little pattern here in you know, some of the paints that are more delicate than others. All right, it's time for Simple Green. A lot of people really swear by this stuff. I've given it a shot before and was not very impressed, but then I realized that I'd been using the, the more dilute formula. This is the concentrated formula, which I have not tried before, so let's give it a shot. All right, time lapse. So Simple Green is mostly water, plus several different soaps, and obviously some green dye, which makes it a little tricky to see what we're doing in this time lapse, but that's all right. It's uh, supposed to be environmentally friendly. Uh, it is not particularly caustic on the skin. I said before that I had bought some of the more dilute formula, and I did not like that as a paint stripper, but I actually found it was very nice at cleaning my kitchen, so I kept it around. So it looks like the purple is starting to go a little bit, so that's great. Purple's just oozing off, falling off all on its own. More evidence that sealing your minis does not protect them against paint strippers. One month later, and we can see the purple and the red both clearly have damage. It's a little hard to see what's going on with the other four colors, so let's take them out and give them a scrub. So as I went through and I did the scrubbing, I was pleasantly surprised with what I found. The Simple Green was able to deal with all six of these different types of paints. Some of them came off easier than others, but with a little bit of brushing, they were all coming off. Next up is Super Clean. I'm excited for this one. This has been my personal go-to paint stripper of choice. I find that it works most of the time. Every once in a while you find a model it doesn't work on, but most of the time this stuff is pretty good. It is a mixture of water and some serious detergents. For those detergents to work, it has to be at a very high pH. So this is very basic caustic stuff. There's a lot of sodium hydroxide in there, also known as lye. So be careful with this. Wear gloves. Use common sense. That being said, it is definitely effective. Uh, we can see in the time lapse here that Many of the colors are showing damage already, and that actually includes the two spray paint colors, yellow and blue, which had not shown serious damage in the other time lapses to date. Here we are after one month of sitting on the shelf. You'll remember that uh, Super Clean started as purple, but now our vials are all tinted different colors, red, orange, yellow. Not quite green, but definitely blue and violet. And so this stuff has really been going to town, so let's take them out and give them a brush. When I got these spears out of their vials and into the bowl of water, the paint came right off. Just very light brush, or even just touching with my gloved finger, this stuff would come right off. And that is all six colors, just right down to bare plastic. Um, you know, I knew this stuff was good from personal experience, but seeing how quickly it took off the testers and those tough spray paints was really impressive. Last but not least, we have LA's Totally Awesome. I heard about this stuff from Ed from Life After the Cover Save podcast. He says it's great and that you can get it at the dollar store, so I went down to the Dollar General and I picked up a bottle for three bucks. Now, this stuff is really nice for time lapses because it is lightly colored. It is also a mixture of water, detergents, and some sodium hydroxide. pH isn't quite as high as Super Clean is, but it'll still hurt your hand if you put your hand in there for long enough, so wear gloves, be careful. But yeah, it's, it's good for time lapses because it's nice and light colored, and it also works. So what I did is I actually let this time lapse run for longer than two hours, and as you'll see, as we go beyond two hours, actually more and more colors start to visibly just slide off the spears. So a lot of fun to watch. Why don't we just sit back, we'll kick on some tunes and strip some paint.
Once again, I left the vials on the shelf for a month, and I came back to see what LA's Totally Awesome had done, and these results are stunning. You can tell that it worked on every single color because the vials are tinted in order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So let's take them out and get to scrubbing. It came as no surprise that every single color came off very easily with the toothbrush. Most of them were off already or came off with just a touch of the finger. So, LA's Totally Awesome did a great job. Alright, let's wrap things up. Here are all of the spears after they sat in their solvents for a month and then got 15 or 20 seconds of brushing. And you can see that all six of the solvents did something. Um, most, for the most part, it was the orange and the purple spears that always got cleaned off, which is interesting because those were the ones with varnish on it. But they were also the ones probably with the thinnest coat of paint, just some airbrushed on army painter. So maybe that's why they came off easiest. Anyway, all these strippers did something. Denatured ethanol did not work on every paint, but actually that orange came off faster in ethanol than any paint came off in any other solvent. So that's interesting. I actually had the experience once in my own hobby where super clean would not work on some minis, but ethanol did, so there you have it. Another good reason to keep some Everclear grain alcohol in your cupboard. Isopropanol did a little bit better than ethanol, but not by much. Ammonia was really not great. Uh, again, I had never heard anyone actually talking about it, I just happened to have some in my cupboard, so I gave it a shot. Simple green was okay. It was not the best, but it, it made a dent in most of the colors, that's for sure. Super clean was great. Those spears are super clean. And also, LA's Totally Awesome was totally awesome. Those spears, ready to get painted again. So, there you have it. I think we have a couple clear winners here. Um, in the future, I would certainly buy Super Clean and LA is Totally Awesome again. And like I said before, Simple Green cleans the heck out of my kitchen, so I'm going to keep buying that too. There you have it. Looks like we found a couple of winners. Let me know in the comments below if this video changed your mind about what you use to strip your minis. Let me know if it didn't. Let me know if you have something that wasn't on this list that you think is better. Maybe you'll get around to testing it one of these days. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks for tuning in.